Paula Kumbu. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I really appreciate that you've all come to listen to this talk about wildlife and conservation. I'm, I'm, I'm really inspired by this session of pop tech. I, I'm just amazed that uh, you know, the kind of meetings that I've been making, I know that this is going to be an important thing for Wildlife Direct. Wildlife Direct is an organization that was established to mobilize conservationists anywhere in the world by making direct contact with those people at the front lines of conservation using technology, especially the internet. And I'll tell you why I'm, why I'm doing this. I'm, I'm a Kenyan. I grew up in Kenya, right on the outskirts of the capital city. Like most Kenyans, we grew up with wildlife all around us, lions, elephants, giraffes. I mean, it was incredible. And I knew from a very, very early age that I just wanted to be a ranger. I wanted to save wild animals. And I wanted to be out there with those animals. Well, the reality is that a lot of wild animals live in the same landscape with people, and it creates a very uh, difficult situation, and there's a lot of wildlife human conflict. One of the tribes that I'm sure you've all heard about, the Maasai, the people that Africa is probably most famous for, live in a landscape where they take their cattle um, on, a, on a gigantic migration, but they're also in contact with lions, and every now and again, a cow would be killed by a lion. And you can imagine, these people are not rich. They have cattle. That is their wealth. They don't have bank accounts. They live in the wilderness. So when a cow gets killed by a lion, their reaction is pretty predictable. They retaliate. And one of the ways that they retaliate is to kill those lions. And what's been happening in recent years is the use of pe poisons, especially pesticides, to lace or bait a carcass that was killed by a lion so that when the lions come back to feed, they all die. And this is a picture of one of the lions that was um, recently poisoned, very close to the Maasai Mara, one of the most famous protected areas, you know, thousands, millions of wild animals there. The lions are declining so rapidly. Kenya has only got 2,000 lions left. That's down from something like uh, 35,000 lions in Kenya, down to 2,000 in the last 50 years. And it's because of this conflict that lions have with people. Every year, we lose about 100 lions in Kenya as a result of this human-wildlife conflict. It, it, to me, it, the, the problem is quite paralyzing. Elephants are down, lions are down, hippopotamus are down. So many species are declining as a result of this failure for us to find ways for people to live with wildlife on the African landscape. The Maasai are a particularly you know, symbolic tribe. The way that young men are initiated into um, adulthood is through a ceremony that actually requires them to kill lions. And they're very fierce people. I mean, you can just see it in that picture. They're angry, fierce people. They carry their spears. And they will actually literally go out and kill a lion. And that is how they you know, migrate into adulthood. Except this guy. This is an extraordinary man. He's a very good friend of mine. His name is Anthony Kasanga. And he lives in a place between the Savo National Park and Amboseli, you know, around the same area as Masai Mara. And he decided that he will not be initiated into adulthood by killing lions. And he enlisted his friends. And they formed a group that they called the Lion Guardians. So instead of killing lions, they take great pride in saving lions. And they actually wander across the landscape, uh, making sure that people and their cattle are safe from lions. And they do this several ways. They live in an extremely remote and isolated place. It's very dangerous. Their work is extremely dangerous. They move across the landscape. They have worked with scientists to radio call a lion so that they can actually track where those lions go. And they've learn the technology, they do this themselves, so they're gathering information that is useful to them as a community, and they share that information with their community. So it's really central to them, and it's just changing the whole culture of this particular community in Kenya. And the reason why they do this is not purely because they love lions. I know that Anthony really loves lions. It's because it has a direct impact on the community itself. They're actually saving the livestock that they depend on. Rescuing children when they get lost out in the wilderness and rescuing cattle when they also, you know, wander off into the bush. Well, we went straight to talk to Anthony and we asked him if he would tell his story because we think that he's one of those few Africans who's really doing something very concrete, really tangible, great results. That story needs to be told. He's also working in a place that is so isolated. He's alone and there's nobody out there helping him. So we introduced him to blogging on Wildlife Direct. And this is Anthony's blog. He sits in the bush. He's got a little computer. He runs it off a, off a solar battery. And he has a telephone modem. 
He has a cell phone, and this is how he blogs from the field. And he takes all those visitors from all over the world who visit his blog on a virtual safari with him when he goes on patrol and tells them what's happening, not just on his tours, but even at his home. He introduces you to his family. And this is a, um, an experience that a lot of people get really addicted to. What's really unique about Wildlife Direct is that we allow those visitors who come to his blog to make a decision how they want to help him. They can volunteer online, or they can make a donation for something very specific. He's looking for funds to support all of his guardians, and it costs $95 a month. That's all. Anthony's been really successful. He's a natural storyteller. People love his blog. He's been able to raise $18,500 supporting you know, all these other activities. But what's really important is the impact that he's achieved. They've saved 50 lions in the last year. That, <laughs> thank you. And, and 50 lions is huge. There are only 2,000 lions left in Kenya. And they did this with $18,500. The value of a lion in Kenya today is estimated to be between $500,000 and a million dollars by the revenue that it generates through tourism. So these guys are able to take that, their funds and actually return it, uh, generate more value through tourism. Thank you. Thank you, Paula.